This movie tutorial is all about the new adjustments and masks panels in Photoshop CS4. Now on the surface of it, there doesn't seem to be any particular big deal about having adjustments now as a panel in Photoshop CS4. After all, adjustments have been around since the very beginning of Photoshop and adjustment layers have been around since version 4. But what is new now about the way we have the adjustments uh, in Photoshop CS4 is because they're accessible from a panel it means that you can always access them at any time whereas previously you'd have to add an adjustment layer and then double click on the adjustment icon in order to open up the dialog that you could then adjust well let me show you what I mean by this uh, first of all let's have a look at the adjustments panel itself and you can see that you've got these button icons here that you can click on to add an adjustment and the description appears at the top of the panel as well as you roll over you'll see uh, so that, uh, for example, if I was to click on to the levels adjustment down here, if I click on this button, you can see that the adjustments panel now switches into the edit mode where we've got all the usual levels adjustment controls that you have been familiar with from the past. And you'll notice that, uh, that as I did that, down in the layers panel below, that a new adjustment layer has been added to the layer stack. So, in effect, if I just undo this, there's no real difference from clicking on the button down at the bottom here, the adjustment button, and then selecting levels from the list. You can use either method in order to add an adjustment to an image. But as I say, the crucial difference is, is that once it's open, you can then start adjusting the settings. So for example, I could make the image maybe slightly darker if I wanted to by adjusting the gamma slider there. And then if I want to return to the list mode, I can click on that button and that then perhaps maybe select a different adjustment this time a black and white adjustment and click on say the auto mode button to get an auto adjustment. Then meanwhile back in the layers panel below you can see that if I click on the uh, levels uh, uh, adjustment layer down there immediately the adjustments panel allows me to see the level settings. I click on the black and white adjustment layer and I can access the black and white adjustments. So the process of accessing and editing the settings now becomes a lot quicker than it was before. And not only that, you have the ability to do things like, uh, for example, if I was to add in a toning layer on top of this, so let me just add in a third layer. Let's put in, um, for example, a uh, curves layer, where I just want to add in, say, a sepia kind of color to the, to the image. I can apply that adjustment there to add in a little bit more red perhaps in a little bit more blue as, as well. And then if I want to, I can go straight down to the layers panel and choose a different blending mode, such as color, so that I could adjust the uh, adjustment blending mode to whatever mode I want, and then still have immediate access to the settings. So you can switch between these two panels, which is something that you couldn't do before. Uh, let me just uh, undo that adjustment. Let me just get rid of that and get rid of the uh, other two adjustments as well and show you um, something else that you can do now as well. You've, if I click on the curves adjustment you'll see that uh, down at the bottom here by the way we've got um, this uh, button here which you can use to enlarge the size of the panel so that you can see it bigger on screen. Click again to make it smaller and then next to it we've got the clipping group button which immediately clips the adjustment layer to the layer immediately below it. and You can click again to undo that. The benefit of that uh, is so that you then fix the adjustment to the layer that's immediately below when you click on this button. When it's switched off it means the adjustment affects all of the layers that are immediately beneath it. And you'll see examples in the book of where I use that. Uh, but the thing I wanted to show you here was the target adjustment mode. You have this also available in other adjustments such as the black and white uh, adjustments panel. And basically when you click on that button, you move the cursor over the image, you can see the hollow circle on the curve itself showing you where about the tones are selected on the tone curve. And then if I click down and drag up, you can see that you can lighten those particular tones or darken them by dragging upwards or downwards. Um, then I can perhaps click on another part of the image down here and then just drag upwards to lighten that particular portion of the curve and then maybe select a shadow area and drag downwards to make that darker. So you've got the ability now to do direct on, on image editing, which is something that was uh, first of all seen in Lightroom. 
And although it's not exactly identical, it's pretty similar and uh, equally as effective for working with the curves adjustment. But there's one little tip here that I should give you, and that is if I go over to the eyedropper tool, look at the options up here, you'll see that you have a sample size menu. And normally this is set to a point size by default. Um, and you don't want to use the point sample because that's only sampling one pixel at a time. Normally you would have this set to a 3x3 three three or a 5x5 five five average, but if you want to do the uh, target adjustment tool editing that I showed you just then, I would recommend you select one of the higher average settings because that means that when you select the sample point to edit the tone curve with, you're sampling a, l a wider radius of pixels and therefore you're going to be a more able to pick uh, an average value for the area that you're trying to edit. Whereas if you had the point sample uh, setting, you would quite easily choose a pixel value that was an extraneous pixel, and that would um, it would just be very difficult to, to edit the curve efficiently at the smaller sample sizes. Okay, let me just close that image down now and show you now how to work with the adjustments linked in with the new masks panel. So you can see that we have this photograph here, which is a little bit light, but I want to darken down the edges in this picture. And the way we would have done that normally would have been to select the marquee selection tool, for example, draw a marquee selection, then feather it, and then apply the, and then inverse the selection, and then apply the adjustment to the outer edges. But the problem with that is that you were limited to having to guess how much to feather the selection before you could see what in impact it would have on the actual adjustment you're about to apply. Well, things are different now in, uh, in, in CS4 because if we start by applying the adjustment, let's say select a levels adjustment and just darken the image down to darken it enough to get the corners to look darker. Then if I select the marquee selection tool, in this case the elliptical marquee tool, I can drag across from the top left corner downwards to make the selection and then simply just fill with black. So we've got black with a foreground color. We've got the layer mask targeted. And I'll go to the edit menu and choose fill and fill with foreground color. So that fills with black. And I can now deselect the selection. And you can see that we've got the corners are darker now, but we've got this hard edge on the mask. Well, now if I go to the masks panel, you can see that we're editing a pixel mask. And there is a slider down here, a feather slider, which if I drag it more to the right will then soften, dynamically soften the edges of that mask so that now that we've got a soft feathered uh, mask and we have ultimate control over just how soft we want it to be. And then you'll notice above there is a density slider and the density slider allows you to basically reduce the contrast of the mask so that by reducing the density you can see how the mask the black areas are now becoming a gray in color I can then actually soften the difference between the masked and the unmasked parts of the picture so that's a really useful tool to have and finally I'm going to show you another way you can work with a masks panel if I switch that layer off and create uh, another adjustment layer or actually no let me just stick with this same adjustment layer but let me just fill that mask with white for now. So I'll make that selected and then just use the command key or control key on the PC and hit the delete button or the backspace on the on the PC to just basically clear that mask. And now what I'm going to do instead is go to the shapes tool menu and select the ellipse tool and then using it in pen path mode I'll just draw a pen path shape, a vector shape similar to the shape that I created when I used the marquee selection tool. And now what I need to do is just make this, set this into the correct mode, uh, go to the layer menu and choose from the vector mask menu, current path. And this will basically create the path. Ah, okay, so let me just select that again. And make sure that it goes into the correct mode. So I need to invert that mask. So remember you've got these button modes up here that you can use to change the uh, inversion, to, to invert the, the layer mask or whether you want to add or subtract or intersect, you can use these different button modes. So now if I just bring out the layers panel, you can see that we've got a vector mask that's applying the masking, pretty much the same as we did before. And then over in the masks panel, we've got the ability to feather 
that mask so that by dragging the mask uh, by dragging the feather across to the right we can once again make it softer but then there's still more that you can do so if I just show you from here if I go to the edit menu and select free transform path I can now change the shape of that path I can rotate the transform and you can see the change taking place over here in the vector mask um, adjustment I'll swivel that round a little bit more maybe make it a little bit smaller hit enter and so let's just uh, take the softness down there on the feathering and I think you'd agree that you can see that there's an awful lot that you can do now by using both vector masks as well as using a pixel mask for doing something as simple as just feathering uh, an image with a vignette. Uh, that concludes this particular movie tutorial. Uh, you can use the images that I've shown you from the DVD. They're accessible there in the images folder. Um, full instructions are included in the notes that accompany this uh, movie tutorial. And you also see other examples throughout the book of where I've used this technique of working with the adjustments and the masks panel in Photoshop CS4.